this week we're reading Wild Magic by Tamora Pierce, otherwise known as All the Baker's Wives Are Going to Be Pissed Off for the Rest of Their Life or Something. Hi readers, I'm Jordan. And I'm Katie. And welcome to Not Another Heroine Season 2, the podcast where we break down the best and worst fictional heroines of any genre. (laughs) Because that's what we do now. Want to see what's next on our TBR list? Subscribe to us on YouTube or follow us on Instagram for a sneak peek at upcoming content or to help us pick our next book. Well, we're back. (laughs) I feel like we should caveat things before we start. (laughs) Yes. If I sound a little weird, it's because I'm dying. Um, Yeah. No, I I caught the COVID uh, while traveling. So I'm I'm sequestered at home and we are remotely recording. So Mm -hmm. this will be a fun listening experience for everyone involved. (laughs) (laughs) You get Jordan's like crazy (laughs) sick voice. You probably get like animal sounds. Oh, yeah. Like there's going to be like a cat chirping on Katie's end. There's going to be dogs howling on my end. It's, yep. Well, uh, the dogs came into the office. So I have like 45 legs in this room right now. (laughs) There could be four dogs chiming in on this uh, particular episode. So, I mean, it, it fits, you know, wild yep. magic, right. uh, animal theme. On theme. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. It'll be, it'll be good. So we mm-hmm. left off. They just got back from their like camping trip basically and are at the palace. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's I accurate. Like, <laughs> that's what happened. <laughs> uh, Cause like their arrival at the palace was kind of like, um, not, I can't think of the word, but like not a downer, but just like, Oh, Okay. It seemed I very guess. laissez-faire. You know what yeah. I mean? Like mm-hmm. Dane Kim comes from this rustic mountain Appalachian village and she's just kind of not shaken at all by being in a massive royal capital. Yeah. She's like, oh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm at the capital now. And it's like, girl, shouldn't you be like panicking or like something? And I mean, she's like a little bit, but not really like enough. <laughs> she randomly stumbles across like very important people and she's just like oh that's that's the queen right there just chilling with the horses yep because i kind of like that like characteristic of tamora pierce's books about tortal or whatever this nation is called is like everyone in it is just kind of like vibing out they're like yeah i'm royalty but you know i just work here (laughs) so i don't mean this as a critique but i feel like these characters are caricatures of like ya new a fantasy characters that yeah it's like everything is exaggerated a mm-hmm. little bit yeah they kind of have like the rounded edges of like kids cartoons you know oh I mean? yeah that's a perfect <laughs> comparison i couldn't i couldn't put it any better like yeah because yeah. <laughs> they just feel a little bit like silly i feel like is maybe the word yeah this book reads a lot younger than i think what it was geared towards originally Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I kind of, the more I've read, because I, for the readers, I just finished the third one and I'm starting on the fourth one in this series. And um, Jordan's inference or like guess that this was originally supposed to be older and they had to age Dane down for what YA was 20 years ago. I feel like that gets more and more like acute as you finish through the series because it's like they try to deal with like bigger themes and it gets like dumbed down at the last second i'm glad you have that take because i wanted to kind of apologize like not it's not a half-hearted apology but you know last (laughs) (laughs) this is not being delivered well and i'm blaming my sick brain and on just tweaking out at the moment when we closed out last episode um you found that uh tomorrow pierce's response to the criticisms about the age gap oh mm mm-hmm And so I I felt like I needed to, one, apologize because I think I felt like I was a little harsh on like our response, I guess our, yeah, our response to that. And Tamora Pierce, to her credit, has not done that again at all in any of her books. And she's written quite a few. I still kind of feel the same way about it, though, that like you're a fantasy author and like there's literally dragons in this series like you don't you don't <laughs> need to be historically accurate like <laughs> not even just dragons we have like completely new magical creatures yeah <laughs> These like, fucking stormwing things i know yeah like person faces on giant crows yeah <laughs> well and so it was interesting to me because i kind of got stuck in that reddit thread that you found and i was reading mm-hmm. some of the responses defending this uh the age gap and the, wow. the relationship and it 
the response was, oh, it's fantasy. This is fake. Think of all of the dark romances that are super popular right now. But I felt a little triggered by reading those responses because yeah. these books are so clearly meant for kids, like kids, kids. Mm-hmm. Well, that's been kind of a big discussion on Book Talk too right now about Akatar being kind of like mislabeled at certain libraries and, you know, places that maybe people aren't familiar with the book. At least this one does not have <laughs> any straight up smut scenes. <laughs> you just got to wait for book four. Oh, no. Because <laughs> I was telling Jordan like off record or whatever that phrase is. I can already tell the weird kind of insinuations in the fourth book already that they're like gearing up to you know she's entered into her early womanhood and it's just not the point of these books at all yeah grody which is crazy too because like the romance that's in this is more like familial like romance if that makes sense oh so again like george r R. martin incestuous (laughs) love it no 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 (laughs) i did not say that (laughs) because like oh Oh, no no. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) see i feel like now you're like making fun of me (laughs) no i'm not i but it's it's the sense because uh we're kind of dabbling across the series right now yeah but the way numer numer introduces dane and treats her it's very much like a like older brother father figure and so that's why that's so gross (sighs) yeah and it makes it kind of like when you're reading it the first time and you are kind of like ignorant of that's the end destination like it feels cozy dane you know is an orphan as we talked about in the last episode or you know orphan adjacent i guess but uh, like she kind of like comes into her found family and it's like cozy and like adorable and like all of a sudden she has an older sister in Anwa. And it's just sad that we had one like her older brother relationship into something like a little bit yucky. <laughs> that wasn't necessary at all. Like it could have been completely left out. I do understand the need if you if you are making some sort of YA, kind of circling back to is this a children's book or is this YA? Because I feel like there's mm-hmm. children's books, there's preteen books, and then there's YA. And I feel like this was supposed to be YA. And a lot of YA has romance as like an underlying theme. I could see uh, that. But still. (laughs) Yeah. Because, I mean, when we talk about the third book, I feel like she had opportunities to make a romance there and then just kind of, like, ignored it and took, like, a crazy left turn. And she's like, we're going to do something kind of gross. And it's like, (laughs) Like, you had the opportunity right there with, like, flashing lights and you're like, swerve. (laughs) It would have been so interesting had she taken the romance in the direction with the emperor. Yeah, Um, that's what I assumed. (laughs) No, we're not that lucky. So I will say uh, for the readers who maybe haven't started this book yet, um, there's really no romance. But I didn't feel like I was gypped. Like it felt fun without needing the romance. Like Mm -hmm. I was entertained the whole time. Yeah, it's very, um, what did you say last time? It's kind of like watching a movie. Like you can very clearly visualize all of these new creatures and action scenes. It's just, it's easy. It's a very like turn your brain off and still enjoy like four hours of reading and then you're done. (laughs) Yeah. I think because of that, these are so impactful uh, when you read them as a kid because it sticks in your Mm -hmm. brain. I could see that because I bet this would have been like my book series (laughs) if I read this at the (laughs) geared age. I feel sad that you didn't get to read this younger because it was. Because I read the Artemis Fowl series, which I feel like is maybe adjacent to this, but less fantasy e or maybe mm. fantasy in a different a- like aspect. Mm-hmm. But similar themes. You know, I was trying to stay away from the age gap rabbit hole that we spent 40 minutes on last <laughs> episode, but I can't help but just dip your, to, like dip my foot in it. Like once you start talking about it, you can't help it. Yep. I've, but it needs to be discussed because I feel like kind of like being scared away from having these discussions is what makes it you know, like perpetuate. And it's like, how about we, you know, sit down and have a round table about this. So I'd love to hear what our readers think. (laughs) Yes. Especially the response regarding like, oh, it's fantasy. It's Mm -hmm. like, it doesn't have to be realistic. It can, it can um, cross some lines here and there, as long as you recognize that in the real world, those lines are really bad. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So I I can almost see both sides because I was one of those early readers that was like, Oh my God, new man. I want to marry him now. (laughs) I would love, I would love to hear some like opinions different from ours. Yeah, absolutely. But back to the actual story, we'll we'll eventually (laughs) finish this book one day. Um, Maybe. (laughs) 
So I really liked, I went through like a horse phase, like I think three quarters of most little girls do. Okay, there you go. All right. So the scene where they're at the palace and Dane is kind of settling in as her like assistant horse mistress role. The -hmm. scene where she's like pairing off horses to the trainees. (sighs) It felt like Build-A-Bear where you're like watching everyone get their like cute. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's like, I want my horse. (laughs) And it, like seeing a little different horse personalities get paired off. And like mm-hmm. Miri, I wish we had gotten more with her. Um, I know. Cause again, Tamora Pierce kind of like missed the opportunity to have Dane have friendships of her age. And I feel like that would have kind of naturally gravitated into a romance of someone her age. But I feel like she kind of like just keeps Dane off. And I know it's, maybe a little bit intentional because Mary is part of the Queens riders and is, you know, training to be a, a soldier basically, but it's also like they can have other friends. Like, Well, and then there's the slightly more age appropriate, like dude in the stable who's like brushing his horse wrong. And Dane comes over yeah. to fix it. And he like starts flirting with her. I'm like, oh, you're 20. She's 13. Still not okay. But you know, <laughs> much better he, than the alternative. Yeah. He's not like, you know, on the, side of (laughs) middle-aged i know oh goodness so she settles into her role but she soon discovers that uh, she doesn't like sleeping inside and that's a problem when you live in a city yeah doesn't she like leave in the middle of the night like she gets assigned a bed and then she wakes up she's like i'm just gonna go sleep in the pasture because that's what i I do (laughs) i think that's basically what happens and then she just like sleeps next to the ponies and they like you know, cuddle her and then she wakes up and everybody's like, where the fuck is Dane? And she's like, I'm out here. <laughs> well, is, isn't this where she's attacked again by the storm? Winds? Oh yeah. They like show up in the middle of the night, don't they? Yeah. Cause she's sleeping with the ponies and the storm winds are like, ha ha, I found you. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> but hindsight, maybe not the best idea. No. especially when she, <laughs> Yeah. When she's being hunted by the queen storm wing or what was it? Bitter claws. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just, you know, don't don't think about it. <laughs> well, and then this is the first time. So it's the middle of the night, Stormwing's attack. Um, magic happens. So Numair comes running out, like robes billowing, and he's like shooting magical fire at the Stormwings. And then Alana comes out. And then this very handsome bearded man comes out and also oh, shoots yeah. magic. <laughs> I thought it was weird um, that Dane is like, so what's the word? Got like an instant Error. girl crush on like the king. <laughs> yeah. Cause she kind of is this way with all of the characters that Tamora Pierce has like previously written as like love interests. Cause she's this way with, you know, the handsome bearded man, which is apparently the king and King Jonathan. Yeah. Would, he would, she would know maybe like a little bit of like, hey, this guy looks a little bit fancier than everyone else. But she has like no idea until he introduces himself as the king. So they defeat the Stormwings and then they have like a little meeting. And this is, mm-hmm. I, I was triggered because this happens in book two as well. And I think I mentioned it last episode. Like there's this constant differentiation between Dane and adults. Um, like yeah. when she's writing from her Dane's perspective, Oh, the adults are doing X, Y, Z. And like, I remember at 13 or 14, I didn't think in those terms. I, I don't know. Cause like I was around a lot of like adults when I was younger. Cause like my siblings were way younger than I was. So I always wanted to hang out with the adults instead of with the children. Mm-hmm. And you kind of do feel a little bit separate, but it's like, I don't have really anywhere else to go, but I like want to be an adult. So I don't know. Damar Pierce could have done like a little bit better of a job of like having Dane's feelings about like wanting to be part of the group, but being an outsider a little bit. I think it was the word choice of like constantly referencing the adults in like a third person writing style. It was, mm-hmm. I think it's jarring for an adult reader. I don't know that it's jarring for a, a younger reader. It's weird when all of a sudden the romance happens with one of those people that was previous and only an adult. Yeah, like, yeah exactly. And so maybe our, no, our, our knowledge is, um, what's the official term for that? Like muddying our view. Um, oh, uh, you know, forbidden knowledge and that's not right. <laughs> no, but you know what I'm getting at, right? So, uh huh. Cause their little meeting, like, I don't even really remember what it was about because it kind of just seemed like it was touching on some of the undercurrents of drama or whatever sketchiness is like starting to happen in Tortal. Right? Yeah, they, they start to mention Karthak, the big empire that's like not at war, but going to be at war pretty soon with them. And mm. so Dane's kind of learning the rumblings of this 
in a sideline manner, but she's not really invested in it. And I think this also kicks off mm-hmm. her, like her official mentorship status with Numer. Like she's his apprentice, basically. Oh, well, that does happen. Yeah. Because then like he starts teaching her about like anatomy. I can never say that word. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> I, I know when you like pause uh, when you, right before you say it, where I'm like, oh, she's trying to think how to say that. So. Yep. <laughs> that I am. <laughs> I think when a Dane's like, caveats or like terms of becoming his apprentice as she wants to learn how to like heal animals which Mm -hmm. i feel like all kids or like maybe girls specifically but kind of all kids in general have that phase where they want to like take care of animals and like plants it's around that like 10 to 12 age yep where yeah raise your hand readers if you had a book that said i want to be a veterinarian when i'm older (laughs) (laughs) yep same Uh uh-huh it's also funny because I had a phase where I wanted to be a paleontologist. So this third book <laughs> hit. <laughs> yeah, the third book is fun just because it's so different. But yeah, so I thought that was cool. Like, again, Tamara Pierce did an excellent job making Dane such a relatable girl heroine because yeah. she's got the animals and the horses and like wants to save the creatures. And she's lost her parents and she feels lost and she feels out of place with her own like peer group. So, yeah. Let's uh, write, do some more checkbox and they're like, oh, let's find every single introverted girl reader in the age of 10 to 13. So, yep. It's almost a little bit, um, not like disturbing, but like Tamara Pierce knew exactly who her target audience oh, was. Oh, 100%. Like, <laughs> it's almost like, how did you know? <laughs> well, I mean, that speaks to her brilliance, though, as an author, like just yeah. creating these worlds and designing these characters. Like Alana is the complete opposite, but that was also designed for a different type of reader. She really covered both of her bases here. I know. No, good job. Well, and then to say nothing of the other Tortol series, I don't know if mm-hmm. you read those. Um, I think I read like, like one of them. I, again, I think it was about a bunch of orphans that have magic powers. <laughs> <laughs> yep, sounds right for children's uh, fantasy romance. Yeah, I really thought that like being an orphan was going to be a bigger issue when I was a kid. Like I thought, <laughs> you know, that happened to like everyone at one point. <laughs> it's like not. Not really. <laughs> well, look at all these fairy tales that we're surrounded with. Like, thanks, Disney. This is just yeah. how the world works, according all to orphans. <laughs> yeah. So because, you know, Dane's mom would have had some issue with her all of a sudden just like hanging out with this older man. <laughs> okay. So, do you have a sense on who Dane's parents are yet? I'm just curious. So, when I was reading this, I didn't until they started making like some very aggressive, like foreshadowing, you know, like drops about it. And like now I have a pretty good idea, but it took me like an awkwardly long amount of time. I remember it wasn't very obvious as a young reader either. And so like when you finally do get the reveal, I think in book four, it's a uh, pretty significant is an interesting turn. Like I wasn't expecting that. I thought she was just like had cool powers. <laughs> okay. Well maybe so spoiler alert. I'm, I'm just going to do it. Mm-hmm. So Dane's dad is a God. He's like an animal God, forest God type of thing. Mm-hmm. So she's half immortal. You would think though, if your dad is a God, um, he might be a little bit more involved if he sees like the beginnings of a romantic relationship between his daughter and a man who's yeah. like in his thirties. <laughs> like he, yeah. he can send a like a gigantic magical badger to like school her. Why isn't yeah. he doing more? Yeah, I was kind of like a little bit let down about the adults in her life just you know turning a blind eye to this because there's multiple adults that see like the rumblings of this as it starts to develop and they like don't say anything. I was like, like shit. Um, thanks, Alana. <laughs> It's like, if I was in this, like, I would have more than enough to say. <laughs> we can't help. We keep coming back to this. It's fine. I know. We'll, it's it's like poisoned the well. It, that's that's what we were. That's the phrase I was looking for earlier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Cause, yeah. Because when I was reading it and I didn't know, it was like perfect and fun and cute. And then Jordan told me and I was like, there's no fun. I, I feel a little and bad it was for you. <laughs> No, I'm glad I did because I get all the like weird lines because I would have just like skipped past them and be like, that's weird. And then, you know, fallen into a bear trap. I love that you <laughs> characterize it as a bear trap. I mean, it kind of is like, I mean, yeah. Not a- <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's- anyway, sorry. <laughs> anyway, Dane helps with the horses uh, oh. all pack up and they move to what? Pirate swoop. They get there, but not before they have an interaction with another magical creature. Right. Oh, the griffins. Yeah. Because at first um, I was like, yeah. 
Humans aren't magical creatures, Jordan. But you're talking about the actual <laughs> magical creatures. <laughs> hey, you know, you never know. They could be. They could be selkies. Okay. I yeah. I mean, sea lions are like pretty fucking weird. So it wouldn't be out of <laughs> you know the realm of possibility. <laughs> I liked how she did. So skipping past the Griffins a little bit, we'll come back to it. I loved how she um, made Dane so new to the ocean. She's never seen the ocean before and had any exposure to sea creatures. So yeah, the sea lions are cool. Cause it was kind of impressive. Cause I feel like a lot of fantasy authors try to do the whole like, Oh, this character has never seen the sea before. They're appropriately baffled for like 13 seconds. And then they're like, yep. That's a large body of water, but it's like I've grown up next to, you know, large bodies of water my entire life. And I'm still kind of like, whoa, that's a lot of water. So <laughs> I feel like Tamora Pierce actually did a good job of like having an appropriate amount of awe and confusion. Well, yeah, I know, the ocean scares me. I don't like swimming in the ocean. I, lo- I love being on top of the ocean. Nope. Put me on a boat and I can like <laughs> sail around, but I don't want to get in it. Mm-mm. I feel like even a boat is a step too far for me. <laughs> Oh, no. And yet you live in the Northwest where surrounded by ocean. Yeah. So now you understand the awe and a little bit of uncomfortableness. Fair. <laughs> well, so this was awesome, though, because Dane is, she's standing in the water or something, and she gets, like, body slammed <laughs> by a fucking sea lion. <laughs> like, this bitch just takes her down and, like, yeah, it freaks her out. And it turns out it's, like, a young male sea lion who's, like, protecting his harem. <laughs> Which I just love this is like an entire concept that Dane's like, oh my gosh, animals to talk to. And he's like, get the fuck away. <laughs> I know. Like this, her whole like shtick is like, oh, I can talk to animals. And this animal's like, nah, not today. <laughs> you are not talking to my women. <laughs> so it, that was awesome. And Dane, mm-hmm. of course, gets rescued. She makes friends with the sea lions and like she gets to go pet the sea lion puppies, which would be. Fucking oh, adorable. Because they're just so fucking cute. They're like little like aliens. Mm-hmm. They have the gi- gigantic puppy eyes, little flippers. Mm-hmm. Gosh. And then we get the, you know, griffins just flying in and they're like, what the fuck is that? And apparently they had been like terrorizing a village for a while. Because I think the villagers were like um, threatening its nest or its young oh. wings or something like that. Yeah. And because uh, I kind of forget what their power is, isn't it? Like people can't lie around them or something. Yeah, that was cool. So that's what, another thing I think Tamora Pierce does really well is like designing these char- like these creatures and then giving them very distinct characteristics. Like, mm-hmm. you know, everyone who like reads fantasy knows what a griffin is, right? Or a dragon or a unicorn. But like the extra details about, oh, well, in this world, griffins have this extra thing. And then how Dane is able to speak to the griffins was fascinating because i think alana even makes a joke too like part of the way through where she's like yeah we need these griffins to go elsewhere or else like all the bakers wives are going to be pissed off for the rest of their life or something like it was some kind of joke about like husbands oh oh that's how, that's how much of my brain is not operating right now it took me so long to get, understand where you were going with that <laughs> That's fair. Like, what? What is she saying right now? Why are the baker's wife suddenly involved? And I, what I built up in my head was like, oh, are the Griffins stealing like their kids or something? <laughs> Specifically, baker's kids. Like, I was trying to find a way. Like, is there something I, I didn't catch on the first read through? <laughs> oh my god! That's All right, weird. but yeah. I feel like it was one of those jokes that, like, you know, when they have kid shows and they have jokes meant for the adults, obviously mm-hmm. watching. Too. That's kind of how this read. Of like, if I was a kid, I don't know that I would completely like really understand get it. that. Yeah. But then as an adult, it's like, God damn, like you did not need to put that in there. <laughs> mm. I, I need to go back and read it because I completely missed that. Because <laughs> I feel like the interaction with the griffin was just to kind of like introduce the concept of like immortal creatures that are just kind of hanging out and like the unease between them and the like general population. Yeah, because up until this point, we've only really had interactions with like evil. I mean, mm-hmm. evil is up to interpretation in the later books, but like these darker immortal creatures. Yeah, it was kind of like the, oh, well, maybe there's some kind of like philosophical discussion about like what these creatures are doing. <laughs> mm-hmm. And that I, that's another really cool thing that happens throughout the books is like Dane's growth as a character and her like understanding of the world and how it's not just black and white. That's another mm-hmm. of her, like moral lessons. Uh, don't get me started, though. Like, I do feel like it gets a little preachy. Yeah. <laughs> And it's funny, too, because it's almost like not preachy about the wrong things, but like she kind of like skates past the whole slavery issue and like books 
all of them. <laughs> yeah. Like of, of all the things not to, I don't know, delve into in this world, yeah. uh, you're going to talk about the immortal storm wings and how uh, they could potentially not be all bad. And we're just not going to talk about all these other human things that are very relevant to yep. modern readers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just going to escape past that and maybe focus almost way too much on something that like is pretty general to understand. Mm -hmm. But then they just like show up at Pirate Swoop and we get like a cameo from Alana's family. Yeah, like her kids and her her kids and her husband is there and Dane meets everyone and she's kind of stuck in this not quite a babysitter role, but she's like mm-hmm. hanging with the kids most of the time while yeah. everyone it's else one of those, is like, you attach yourself to like the older kids. Cause you're like, yeah, mm-hmm. like I'm cool too. And the older kids are like, can you go away? <laughs> yeah. This really reads like a lot of filler um, up until mm-hmm. the whole point, which is, Oh, surprise. Dane has bat friends and they come <laughs> to warn her, <laughs> which I, I know you liked this. The bat friends. <laughs> Don't like I forget how it like evolves, right? But like I, I just have this scene in my head where Dane is has is covered in like these tiny little furry bats who are just squeaking in her ear about how there's bad people nearby. I think that's basically how it goes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I think but, she like goes outside and like sees one of them and they're like, Hey, uh, y'all are surrounded. And Dane's like, um, excuse me? Like, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> and the bats are like the poor little bats are panicking, like their oh, yeah. environment has been ruined a little bit. And just mm-hmm. before this, Alana, because she's the king's champion, she was mm-hmm. called away to go fight an ogre or something. Oh, yeah. Cause they're like there's like a group of ogres just somewhere. And then you realize that this was like all intentional and they're surrounded and Alana's not there. And they have a bunch of like kids that are now, you know, being asked as like hostages or like for ransom. Yeah. Because isn't Queen Thayet there as well with, yeah. Oh, with yeah. the heirs. Yeah. They're surrounded. Yeah. <laughs> they're surrounded. Oh no, ships, but they're not flying any flags. So they're like not from Carthak, but they're totally from Carthak. I and there's that a- was like a kind of cool thing for Tamar Pierce to include because it's like a little bit more of a like higher thought level, you know, maneuver that they're doing, but it's still easy enough to explain to like the intended reader of this. Yeah, I, it really reminded me of the way Sherwood Smith does like um, military movements in, in Crown Duel. Like, yeah, uh, a little bit more simplified so, like, a younger reader can understand it, but complicated enough that it's interesting. Yeah, same thing here. I forget how it also, I say I forget, but we have notes. Um, (laughs) Like, they start attacking and then that's it, right? Dane starts attacking. Yeah, because I think Bitter Claws, like, shows up and she's like, these are the terms. Like, we want the kids or maybe, like, one of them in for, like, Queen Thea to come with us as a hostage. Otherwise, we're going to, like, blow up all of Pirate Swoop. And everybody like immediately starts sweating. <laughs> yeah, because these war barges that are like parked in the harbor have like basically cannon catapult systems on them. Mm-hmm. They're all like gigantic fireballs and they have mages. Fireball. Dun, 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 dun. Sorry. You did <laughs> not. <laughs> oh, okay. I did not hear that song and not. <laughs> Sorry. Oh. Well, we also get a little peek into like the Karthak ma- magic system because Numer like educates Dane. He says, oh, like the red robes on the ship are like battle mages and the yellow robes are like steering the ships. And I thought that was also a really cool touch. Yeah, because it's kind of like a... um not a foreshadowing, but just like laying the foundation for them to, I feel like the focus of the third book is kind of like on the magic university in Karthak and all of that. Mm-hmm. Way better. I cannot wait for you. Wait, you finished book three. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, we, can, we can't talk about it yet. It's probably my favorite book in the whole series. <laughs> it was oh, good. Yeah. The scene. A distracted by the dinosaurs, but. <laughs> oh, yeah. But the scene in the uh, greenhouse kind of thing mm. where mm-hmm. Dane is like eavesdropping on Numer and Ozorn. Oh, yeah. I know. That exactly scene lives in my head for the last 20 years. So. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> that, yeah. It was pretty. Uh, it packed a punch. <laughs> uh, yeah. Just a little bit. Focus. We're on wild magic, not on book three and four. <laughs> It's impossible. Um, Because I will say that, like, this fight was, like, not going well, but it was, like, happening. And, you know, she calls into the animals to, like, don't help me. Like, you're going to die. But then it, like, takes up too much of her energy. So she's, like, finally, like, okay, fine. You can help me. And everything's, like, going okay. But then this, like, dragon comes out of nowhere. (laughs) Yeah. So this kind of seemed a little slipshod. And one of the negative reviews I read of this book really focused on 
Dane's like um, flip flopping on involving the animals because she goes from adamantly not wanting the animals to help her to Anua says two lines to her and Dane's like, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> guess let's get everyone involved now. Um, yeah. So one of the re- the reviewer was very critical of that, which I think is valid. Uh, mm-hmm. But again, you're dealing with a 13 year old, so of course they're going to have like very like their opinions are going to be easier to sway. Yeah. And especially in, I think that's what frustrates me the most is like it, all it took was one sentence from this like older adult figure that, you know, Dane trusts for her to change her mind. And it's like, is that not kind of a yucky parallel to what happens in the fourth book? That's a really good point. They have kind of not undue influence, but I mean, they have like influence over the decisions of this like young girl. And it's like, how is it okay in this book, but not in later books? I, hmm. That's, a little tidbit for you there. <laughs> oh, I'm going to dwell on that for a second. Thanks, Katie. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Goodness. But well, then we get this, like, really fucked up, like, moment where she tries to, like, reach out to the whales to help. But they're all, like, hardcore pacifists and talk about, like, killing themselves if they, like, hurt anyone. And she's like, speak, well, yeah, just, like, do it this one time. <laughs> Well, talking about like high level concepts, pacifist whales, like really, yeah. <laughs> like that's cool. Like what I a know. neat touch. I don't remember I, that from reading it as a kid. Oh yeah. Cause I was, I, and it probably takes like more of an adult, like to have opinions on it, but I was kind of irritated by the whales. I was like, y'all <laughs> like, really? Katie, you have a very definition of fiery. You, I, <laughs> if you were going to be a book heroine, you would be fiery. <laughs> So oh, I'm yeah. not going to like the pacifist whales. No, I bet you your best friend in this book would be the killer kraken. That's true. Yeah. I love this kraken creature because this is like not even morally gray. Like he's straight up black, you know, soul character. <laughs> Dude, so Dane's like talking to the whales. The whales are like, no, nah, man, I can't help you. So don't let's kill this conversation now. And Dane's like, well, I'm going to go out and see what I can find. And then this, <laughs> I like you said. This Kraken is cool. And he's like, you got some people for me to kill? I got it. <laughs> Tell me where. <laughs> Comes out of a dark alley with the like, you know, trench coat on and like opens up his thing. And he's like, I can kill anything. Like, what you got for me? You see my arms? And, like, even I Dana's a little bit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's like, uh, girl, maybe you shouldn't be talking to like, you know, centuries old sentient you know creatures that live at the bottom of the sea like this is why there's like, no way this could go wrong <laughs> he just kind of shows up and is this like before or after the dragon attacks because i feel like the timeline of this like last part of the battle is a little bit confusing like there's a lot of things happening all at once and they all feel really random yeah i i know like some people get injured, but nothing serious. The dragon shows up um, and leaves and then comes back. That's yeah. I think, makes it more confusing. But yeah, so a dragon starts attacking Pirate Swoop and is like in a rage, like a mindless mm-hmm. rage until Dane like somehow breaks through to her. Yeah, because I think she just like puts her hands on her belly or something. And that's where it gets kind of like depresso because yeah. apparently this dragon is so angry because it like got brought into the world on accident when the mages like on the boats opened up you know a gap between their world and the immortal land and Mm -hmm. this dragon got like sucked through but she was pregnant and so getting sucked through made her suffer a miscarriage and that's why she was so mad but isn't it so it's at this point where dane is able to like heal the baby dragon right Mm -hmm. and then so she the like energy sucked out of her or something yeah, and then the dragon flies away with her like little kitten dragon alive now. Um, yeah. And this is again where it gets weird because like hours later, the dragon comes back having given birth to a little baby dragon and decides to join the human fight. <laughs> yeah. Like, why? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. The whole dragon thing was like really last minute and confusing. <laughs> I think it was just a like a development so Dane can have a baby pet dragon now. Yeah, I get it. Like, I too <laughs> want a baby pet dragon, <laughs> but. It just didn't make sense. Like it was not a logical because yeah. these dragons are described as incredibly intelligent, like academics, like the Kraken and the whale combined times a hundred. Yeah. And then also can read and do magic. <laughs> yeah. And so the dragon's like, oh, I'm just going to throw my lot in with you all when I have a baby in a cave. Yeah. <laughs> and then like throw her lot in with them, like in a nonsensical kind of way. Cause she like immediately is, is, 
killed. <laughs> yeah, right away. Like, by, in the dumbest manner possible, a catapult launches yeah. and takes this gigantic dragon down. Yeah. And it's like, did you not? How old are you? How did you not know? <laughs> I was just like, wait a second. <laughs> it was weird. I'm at the eye rolling that's, stage of plot developments. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's how the end of this kind of feels. And I will say it's kind of confusing too, because I feel like this is the only scene in this whole series that's a little bit just like slapped together. Yeah, it, it does feel a little rushed. Somehow they win uh, because <laughs> yeah. Dane convinces all the little squirrels and all her little badger friends to go break into the enemy camps and damage their food supplies. Great. Haven't seen that done before a thousand times <laughs> over. Um, <laughs> but uh, okay, fine. It, it, it's still a children's book. That being accomplished, they win the battle. Everyone flees. And then they go off to find the baby dragon. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because, I mean, that's almost like the very last scene of this is... They just randomly go somewhere because Dane knows where to go. And then she like falls into this crack and there's a baby dragon. <laughs> and it, the way this little dragon is described, it's so cute. Oh, it just like comes out. It's like um Norbert from Harry Potter when he oh, like cracks open yeah. the cake and then he like burps up fire. <laughs> that's what I imagined. <laughs> yeah. And they name the little dragon kitten and that's it. That's the end of wild magic. Right? <laughs> yep. But, <laughs> I'm trying to think if there's anything we're missing, but. No, I don't think so. Because I kind of think at some point Dane kills Xana Bitterclaws, but like I don't know when that happens, but it, I, th I think it does happen because then all of a sudden Dane is known as like the Stormwing Killer. And oh. then that's her like nickname for the rest of her life. But <laughs> that's a, that's <laughs> that a problem at some point. <laughs> later in the series. Yeah. But, but yeah, that was so much action packed into very little space. Because that's what I mean. Like, I don't know if Tamora Pierce maybe struggles with writing action scenes, but it was pretty thrown together. And I even felt that way when I was reading it. And I was like, I don't really understand what's going on, but like, I kind of get it. But also, like, what is happening? <laughs> and honestly, you could probably stop reading there and be fine. It does, it does work as a standalone, as long as you're not, like, perturbed by whatever's happening with the Karthraki Empire or whatever, mm -hmm. which at this point you're really not concerned with what's happening. You could probably yeah, it, call it good. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't quite leave on a cliffhanger, so you could be satisfied, but, like, the writing style is conducive to wanting to continue on. It's very, very mm -hmm. easy, because you don't feel like you wasted time reading it. And the, like, other ones in the series read the same way, where it's like, yeah, might as well just keep reading it, like... It's a good book. I know I'm going to like it. <laughs> There's very few books that I can get through like that now. So mm -hmm. I started reading yeah. Wolfspeaker but yesterday, the day before. And I don't think I read Wolfspeaker before. And it's just one of those oh. things where I'm like, I'm not, I, I skipped it because it, it seemed like filler when I read the synopsis. I'm like, I'm just yeah, going to no, go straight true. to Emperor Mage. But <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, it's kind of one of those books where you're like, I am not losing anything by reading this. And I kind of want to know what's happening next. And it's just so low effort. Uh, you just mm -hmm. keep reading. For, whereas some of these books, you feel emotionally exhausted by, yeah. by just turning the page. Yeah. Um, I'm in a little bit of, what is that called when you can't find books to read? Um, a, a book. A slump. A reading slump. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Brain was not <laughs> <laughs> helping at all. <laughs> I'm in a little bit of a reading slump. So it was nice to have a book that like I know I'm going to enjoy. And it's just like, oh, let me pick up like the next one. Might as well. Like I can't find anything else to read. So it's one of those like if you're ever in like kind of a slump, it's like I know these are going to be good. I know I'm going to read them and enjoy them. And it's going to be easy and not like, you know, stab a a knife through my heart like <laughs> exactly and then if you haven't read her other books set like the it's the page squire knight series i think is immediately after this one. Oh yeah uh, protector of the mm -hmm. small i think is what it's called so it, that's it's the one about alana right no that's so alana is Whoa. song of the lioness is the name of her series so that was the first one and then the immortal series and then protector of the small is like the third series set in tortal oh um, and then I couldn't quite get into these. Um, maybe I'll try again. So there's a, a series. Uh, I think the first book is called Trickster's Queen. Um, oh, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you read those? So I've read one of them in that series or maybe like two or three because it's about like four orphans that are all like friends and they each have like a different type of magic. If I'm I thinking think about the right one. That's Circle of Magic. I think that's a different oh, world. Yeah. <laughs> that's that one. <laughs> Circle of Magic. <laughs> but I think the Trickster's Queen one is set in Karthak. Oh, interesting. Or like Karthak adjacent. So. Uh -huh. hmm. I actually would not mind reading that one. 
And so I want to just have like books in your back pocket that like, you know, if you get in a slump, you could read. Yeah. Just work your way through Tamora Pierce's cat- entire catalog and you'll be fine. <laughs> yeah, basically. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But well, from our shelf to yours, we'll see you on the next page. Hi, readers. If you'd like to help us pick our next book, send us a message on Instagram. Or if you'd like to just listen, we post new episodes every Monday and Wednesday on Spotify, Apple, and Amazon. Thanks for listening. Bussin'. <laughs>